Statistics and Excel. Perfect negative correlation. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon, left-hand side, OneNote presentation, 1718, perfect ne negative correlation tab. Also uploading transcripts to OneNote so you can go to the view tab, the immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose, be able to either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie into the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here, thinking about correlation where we have different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relationship or correlation between them. In other words, are the different dots and the different data sets moving together in some way, shape, or form? If there is a correlation or mathematical relationship between two different data sets, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship that's causing the correlation or mathematical relationship between the two different data sets? And if there is a causal relationship the next logical question would be what's the causal factor that's causing the causal relationship which is causing the correlation or mathematical relationship between the two different data sets we're now thinking about a perfect negative correlation which is not something we typically look at when thinking about correlations because usually it's not a perfect correlation but more of a trend but we're gonna first start off with the perfect negative correlation. We looked at in a prior presentation, the perfect positive correlation. So the example that we will look at then is gonna be distance and uh, distance traveled versus the distance remaining. So you can imagine, of course, if you're going from point A to point B, then you can think about the full amount of distance that you have to travel versus the distance uh, that is uh, remaining. How much distance have you traveled versus the distance remaining to travel? And those uh, relationships between those two distances will have a perfect negative correlation as you cover that distance. So we're going to build our data set this time imagining in Excel that we used a random number g generator. So we're going to imagine that we had random numbers that were generated from uh, 1 to 100. And so the formula would be equals random between, uh, let's say zero and 100, between zero and 100. And that's gonna give us our data set on the left that we can imagine that we could just create. And, and that of course is not being, would not conform as our positive, our prior example did to a bell curve, but it would conform more to if we were to try to graph a, a curve with it, a function to it, to a uniform uh, distribution. So then once we have the distance traveled, if we say that the total distance is 100, then we're going to generate our distance remaining by taking 100 minus the 94. So if I take each of these data points and take 100 minus each of the data points, then the two of these will add up to the to 100 and you can see there's a perfect relationship between uh the data points they they add up to 100 that's going to be showing to be a perfect negative correlation relation so but we'll imagine here that we don't know that yet we have these two data sets and possibly we're trying to test them out to see if there's any relationship between them so what could we do to do that? We could graph each of these. I could say, here's the distance traveled. I would do this in Excel by selecting the entire thing, entering a histogram, 
and looking at the data points in the histogram and this is just numbering in the buckets how many of those items are falling in the histogram now note if we did this an infinite amount of times given the fact that we did a random number generator the histogram you would think would tend towards a uniform distribution or a straight line as opposed to the prior example when we looked at a distribution that happened to have a bell curve type of distribution now the fact that we have more of a uniform distribution as opposed to a bell-shaped distribution or any other kind of distribution does not necessarily mean that there's not a correlation between this data set and the other data set but it might give us some idea of what's happening in general with the data set so the second one you can see if i select this whole data set the distance remaining and make a histogram again you get a relationship which if we did this infinitely would tend towards a straight line or uniform uh, type of distribution so the fact that these both tend towards possibly a uniform distribution doesn't really tell us that there's a correlation uh, or not but we just want to show that you can have when we, you're looking at these correlations each of the data sets could have you know different types of distributions that may or may not lend themselves to some type of curve like a bell curve or poisson distribution or uniform distribution and so on so let's now take the mean and uh the the standard deviation so if i take the mean of my data sets we're just going to select the entire data set if we were in excel and take the average of it which is the mean all of the data sets divided by the number of items we'll take the standard deviation for a sample this time that would be the standard deviation dot s for the sample we would select the entire data set and pick this function to get our standard d for both the distance traveled and the distance remaining now just looking at these two points it might not give us a whole lot of information as to whether or not uh, there's a relationship uh, between these two it could but the next thing we could do is say let's do our uh, formula by the way we could of course plot this and that would give us uh, very a, a good indication of what's happening but before we do that let's do our formula so here's our good old correlation formula we have been working on basically taking the z-score of the first data set times the sum of the z-scores of the second data set so we're going to take all the z-scores meaning we're going to take each data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation of one data set same thing for the second data set multiply them together sum them up and then divide by n minus one so where you can see as we saw in the prior presentation that this has heavily to do with kind of the z score to help us out with what is happening with the two different data sets so this is going to be the the distance traveled and this is going to be our the z of the distance traveled so if we were to think about the z it's going to be in this case 94 minus and then i'll pick up the mean which is going to be for this one the 53 so minus 53.92 about there's rounding involved here divided by the standard deviation 28.64 and that's going to give us our about 1.4 here and then we're going to and we're going to do that all the way down so we'll do the z score all the way down for the 65 give us the z the 14 will give us the z and so on and so forth remembering that uh the z uh, kind of tells us how close it is to that basically the middle point to the mean we're comparing to that middle point okay so then we're going to say let's do this for the remaining distance same kind of thing we're going to take each point and do the z score in this case we have six minus we're going to take six minus the mean this time is 46.08 divided by the standard d 28.64 and that's going to give us the negative uh 1.4 about so there we have that one and i'm going to say okay we're going to do that all the way down we're going to do that all the way down and so there there we have it you can see a, a pretty heavy relationship between the z scores here right right the z scores seem to be tying out which could give us some indication that there's some kind of correlation so then I'm going to say this is going to be that's my z-score calculation and then we multiply these together so we did this for each data point now I'm just going to multiply the 1.4 for example times the 1.4 on the negative so we're going to say 1.4 times 
negative 1.4 or uh, let's do that again uh, 1.4 times 1.4 is negative 1.96 and we do that all the way down that means we have almost our entire numerator all we need to do is sum up this outer column so I'm going to go over here and say let's do that let's sum up the outer column and we sum that up it comes out to 204 then the denominator is n minus 1 and that's going to be n which is 205 that's going to just be counting all of all of the data points how many data points were there there are 205 data points that we made and less one that gives us 204. notice the formatting that i'm putting this into this formula into this is kind of a useful tool especially in excel because it allows you to kind of be able to map out a formula like this in something more of a table which is another way to visualize the data so to do that i said this is the denominator i'm going to say the denominator is n minus one colon or you could call it denominator and colon and then we're going to say the n and i'm going to pull this into the inside indent it so that we have our sub calculation less one and then i indent it twice and i put the answer on the outside leaving us with the numerator on top denominator on the bottom and then of course we can divide the numerator and the denominator boom boom and that will give us one a negative one this time which indicates that we have a perfect negative correlation now if we plot this out then of course we'll also see that we have a perfect negative correlation because it's going to be a straight line to plot this out all we did is select the two data points distance traveled distance remaining when we do this we're going to use a scatter plot and we always have if you by default it'll put the distance traveled on the x-axis which we typically think of as the independent variable but you can plot it either way because sometimes you might know not know whether it be dependent or independent and in our in this case we probably would think of basically the distance travel as us physically kind of doing something so we probably think of that as you know like the the independent variable right and as our distance uh, traveled goes up as this gets higher the distance remaining goes down so if we go 20 miles let's say the distance remaining uh, is at uh, 80 if we travel more and we go to 40 miles then the distance remaining has now gone down to 60 so you've got this negative relationship it's a perfect negative relationship because all of the points of course fit on that exact line now you could plot it the other way and you might say well what if i reverse this distance traveled on the y distance remaining on the x will that make it a positive relationship no it'll still be a negative relationship so it'll look it'll look like this and so you can still see you know the relationship and it still has a negative uh relationship this way and so you could plot either way and and again over here you, you could say well the, you know you might think here like the 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 causal factor the thing that is is the traveling that's why you might think of it as on the x as the thing that's causing the other one the distance remaining to change possibly in this case but again you could see the relationship as a perfect negative relationship whether you graph it on the left or, or the right so you can see uh like if you were to look at it this way you can see okay if i had 20 uh miles remaining that means i drove 80 miles and if i have 40 miles remaining or i drove or i want whatever we're doing 40 miles remaining uh we had uh uh 60 miles so it's going down and if i have uh more miles remaining more miles remaining that means we have less distance traveled but again usually we would think about it this way most likely we would be saying okay if i went uh if i drove 20 miles the distance remaining would be 80 if i drove 40 miles the distance remaining would go down to, to 60 if i drove 60 miles the distance remaining is down to 40 and so on now we could double check this using our super uh cool analysis toolkit and if this isn't open by default in excel so if you don't have the analysis toolkit you could turn it on in the options which we do in the excel if you want to do that but we can open up that analysis toolkit and we can use the the well we could do the correlation up top the correlation will give us uh something like this so i didn't do the correlation but the correlation 
will give us will spit out an answer f that will uh, tie into the perfect negative correlation. So I could use Excel just to give me that negative correlation without doing the whole calculation like this. But doing the calculation like this will probably give you better intuitive understanding. And if you're building a bigger worksheet, then this will be a dynamic worksheet. See how you can see what's happening with the z-scores and whatnot? That gives you more understanding than, than just spitting out that the correlation is negative one. But you can use that, of course, to double check your answer or possibly to give you a pre preliminary understanding of what's going on. You can also do the descriptive statistics, which is quite common, which is nice. And it'll give you this general information about the two different data sets. So distance traveled, distance remaining, gives us the mean, gives us the standard error because we picked up this, the confidence level, uh, which we're not focused in on right now. Median, mode, standard deviation, sample variance, kurtosis, skewness, range, minimum, maximum, sum, count, and the confidence level. So this is a great tool, but again, it's not dynamic. It doesn't change when you change like the data. So if you're constructing like a, a dynamic worksheet, then you might use this as the starting point to give you to give you an understanding about the data sets before you build whatever you're building and or as a checkpoint at the end to kind of double check the calculations that you've made.